history in the making. Healing to be awakened. Yeah, you are the star of your story at Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. You know, my son is born on a Wednesday. Seen and felt because they are the largest group. Mm. And so my you, we got your back. No, we're not perfect. And, um... So now you know it's time to grow at Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. Let the healing begin. Okay, audience, we're back to the part four of Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. Talking to Miss Jelena. I am happy to be here. It is such a privilege to be able to tell the truth of your life as you see it. May not be in agreement with everyone, but it's my life. That's right. So this is the final part of no more tears and no more fears. Mm -hmm. The story of Miss Jelena J. So uh, thumbs up from now, because you know it's going to be good if you watch part one, two, and three. Uh, subscribe, leave a comment, because I'm doing the work for the people. So let's continue talking. All okay. right. Um, you know, we ended it talking about, you know, the fact <coughs> that you moved away uh, from out of your area um, of living, uh, one part of L.A. to another part with mom after mom's, you know, what she did to dad, you know, um, in front of the children and the effects that may have been on the children. You know, tell me, uh, <coughs> it's now, really honestly, mm -hmm. with my sister and my brother, they don't remember that. They don't remember it. And, you know, like I said earlier uh, in part three, sometimes we, we shut down from traumas that are so terrible that we cannot conceive. Because how can we love someone if we knew that they did something so terrible in front of us? So she said they don't remember it. And she also said they were present. So, you know, I'm not a psychologist, but we kind of know sometimes how that may go. So I'm going to ask you, tell me a little bit uh, about where your brother and sister are now. What happened to them uh, as time goes? I'm just jumping ahead, and then we're going to go back. So I'm going to go ahead and back. Both my brother and sister are deceased. Okay, they both passed on. Yes, my brother was murdered mm. uh, in 1998. Uh, okay, sorry to hear that. And my sister was, um, this past year, she was hit by an automobile. 2023? Yes. 2022. 2022, she yes. was hit by an automobile? Yes, and passed away. And passed away. Yes. So you're the only one left in your family? In, in my immediate family. In your immediate family. My mother uh, passed away in 2016. Okay. And my father had passed away in 2008. Okay. Eight years before mom. Yeah, eight years before mom. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, did, was it ever discovered that mom had mental illness? Anybody declared it? We, which we all know based on her action that could be the case. Mom was, was uh, she should have been diagnosed and cared for long ago. Yes. But she she never would accept that. Never. Of right. any kind. Anytime anyone mentioned to her that she needed some physical help mm -hmm. or some um, uh, emotional assistance, she would Deny. avoid living or being around being that around person it. altogether. Okay. That makes sense. So, um, that makes sense. There was an incident where um, she was applying uh, for a, a license to have young children live in a home. She had an adequate space for that. You're right. And it was denied. And she challenged it. And they, when, they, when she went to the presentation, they had laid it out as to why they denied mm. her. And 
in it was her treatment of me as a child in the different time frames wow. <coughs> that these incidences had occurred. From my head being busted, uh, my arm being cut, my teeth being knocked out, your eye, my eye, your eye, my eye being gone, uh, a number of things, and they just laid it out to her as to why they would never give her a license. So it's a summary of your abuse. The summary of it they laid out when she was trying to get a child care license exactly. to care for children. Exactly. And that's what the guy, so she called me, because by that time I'm not living in her area. You're an adult now. I'm an adult. She called me and said, write me a letter telling them, telling, uh, stating how well you were raised and how happy you were as a child. And I'm not doing that. Oh, no. <laughs> That line for anybody to no. you or anybody, right? And she never said to me why she needed that, yeah. So the next day, I called my sister and I said, Why would mama ask me for that? And she said, Because she's trying to get a license, at, and they denied her twice. You know, I wish you all could have seen or felt or experienced the relief that I had because she'll never be able to do that to another person, period. Again. And the justification that I needed for acknowledgement of all the things that she had done, it came to pass. Yes. And I, yeah. <sighs> wow. And with you saying that, I'm going to back it up a little bit, audience. I'm going to go back a little bit and ask Miss Jelena, how did she get out of the situation? Because you've explained uh, basically the abuse, you know, what happened to father, father and mom split, and you're still a young person growing up. And so you're nearing now, uh, you, you left home. Tell us about how that occurred, how you finally was able to escape this abuse. Um. When I was nine years old, I, I I believe in spiritual beings. Yes. And no one is ever going to be able to take that from me. Yes. My mom uh, was desperate to get my father back, back home with us. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crazy. Right. You, you, next time you do something, I might die. Yes. You know? So... She sought all kinds of methodologies to get him to come back home mm -hmm. or be influential in getting him back home. And one of them was to visit a medium. Okay. My grandmother begged her not to do that. Okay. She said, you're, when you do something like that, you're committing your soul eternally. Right. There is no comeback right. from right. that. Right. You know, she wouldn't listen, mm. which she never did anyway. And she did it. And when she found out that there, there was a change in her and she was frightened of that change, she ran to four or five different in, uh, individual religions to see if she could get a relief from that. Now, mind you, she was born and raised a Catholic. Mm -hmm. And they have enough of that kind of thing going on with them that many people don't know about. Right, right. Anyway. She joined, she finally settled on joining the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay. And um, I had been raised and prompted by my grandmother to be a Catholic, and it really upset me. And I was really upset. We were sitting in the, at the kitchen table when she made the decision that we were going to change religions, and of course we were going to go along with what she wanted. I saw my angel. You saw your angel? I saw my angel. In the room? In the room. He was standing behind her and spoke directly to me. He said, you're going to go through a lot of different trials until 
I come and get you. And you'll be able to leave when I come and get you. That happened, I was nine at that time. That happened when I was 18. How that happened was that morning she'd gotten up, oh no, she was in the bed, and she asked me, what did you do with the quarter that I gave you? And this time now you're 18 years old. I'm 18 years old, why are you gonna ask me about a quarter? <laughs> so she said, well, when I get up, I'm gonna beat you because I haven't had my exercise on mm -hmm. beating you. And right then I said, no, not this time. And knowing that I would have had to fight with her, I said, I'm not going to be present for that to yes. occur. Yes. I showered, I dressed, and I went out to go find me a job. I got back about mm, 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening, because it was summertime. And she came at me with a rake because she was outside to hit me. And I dodged and I ran down the street. A lady that was living in um, one few of the doors homes. Down. Huh? She was living a few doors down? Yes. She beckoned to me and she said, come here. She said, you can't stay in your mother's house another night. You gotta go today. I don't have any money. She said, neither do I. But you gotta go. You can't stay there. You have to leave. So, in the home we were living in, there were six bedrooms, and there were uh, four exits around the house. So I went in on another door, and I was in the closet mm -hmm. hiding. My brother and sister, they saw me. Mm -hmm. They said, Mama's going to kill you if she sees you. I said, well, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. We had twin beds in the room that I was in, where the, the top of the bed was about this high. Mm -hmm. I crawled up under there, mm. and I stayed there that whole night, slept. My mom got up the next day. She went around to every window in the house, every door in the house, to make sure they were all locked. She didn't know I was in the house already. I got, when I knew she had gone, I came out. I packed my suitcase. I said, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to manage this? And that angel that had spoken to me when I was nine, he said, I told you, when I was ready, I'd come and get you. And it's time for you to go. I wrote a check, because they were checking it out in my name. Went to the bank, cashed it, came back, called the house four or five times to make sure she wasn't there, got a cab, went and got my suitcase, came out, got on the bus, and went to San Francisco. Gone. And I've never gone and back. And you've never gone back and you were 18. I was 18. And the angel came for you. Yes. And guided you. He did. I went, the bus got to San Francisco at 5 in the morning. I went, I found a newspaper. I asked directions. And I went to the employment office. And I told the lady, I need a job today. I can do anything that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I can clean house, whatever. But I gotta have a job today because mm -hmm. I'm not walking these streets. Look at that. Yeah. And so. And that's the, that is the beginning, beginning of a new life a for me. Beginning of a new life, mm -hmm. an ending of a traumatic life, but you learn so, so much. much from it. Yes. And tell me. Did happiness ever come your way? Did you ever Look tell at me? Well, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know what, audience? She is very happy and glowing, as you can see her. And she, and, and not only just seeing her, the fact that she could tell it so freely speaks of how well and healed she is. And we give thanks to the, to the universe for that. We give thanks to the Almighty for that. And the spiritual energies that protected her, we give thanks for that. Because, you know, there's so many in our lives that have, you know, you see them on the streets now. You know, there's, you see them unhoused. You know, you, a lot of them are in the graveyard, you know. Mm -hmm. So we, we thank God that she made it through. You see, 
because these are a few of the generational traumas that has arisen out of the tragic years of our enslavements in the diaspora as a whole, and America in particular. The 246 years of shackled slavery left painful, unspeakable suffering that finds its way to seeping into the future generations' lives. I would imagine that this could be such a story until she arrested it and directed it based on her internal belief and faith. It's been only 159 years since our emancipation from slavery in North America. Yet, without a system that is open to acknowledging the psychic effects on our families as we raise our children, then we are possibly just raising pawns for our economic wheels to benefit from. Mm -hmm. And that, so today's uh, the conversation I had, uh, I'm having with Ms. Jelena is my part of doing, uh, contributing to making a change. The banner here says, history must restore what slavery took away. For it is the social damage of the slavery that the present generation must repair and offset. And although my sister says that her grandmother, her matriarchal grandmother was kind of from a different Guadeloupe to uh, France, you know, you could see when they came to the Americas, the effects of what was going on during those years, how it played a part. So I, I want to give you the last words to basically, you know, surmise in any way you want, you know, what you feel and what you want the audience to know at this point in your life. Um, to be where I am right now, emotionally, I've had what I consider real mothers in my life Talk that didn't come again. about until uh, after I had left. Mm -hmm. And uh, real mothers in your life. Real mothers in my life. Okay. I, and I mean that. You know, yes. uh, they, they spoke honestly. Yes. And they spoke um, correctly to me. Now, I will say something about the fact that we need to learn how to be a wife, how to be, how to have a husband how to raise our children. I was never blessed to have a child, and in one respect, it may be that that was a good thing. Yes. You know, uh, I've been married twice. Uh, my first husband, he didn't understand, if you put your hands on me, I'm going to fight. And I might end up hurting you and going to jail behind that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, no more. No more. No more. And uh, when he hit me, that was it. The last time we ever stayed together. My second husband, he was a deceiver. He, uh, he had two children already, and he never told me about them. Okay. And uh, consequently, things just fell apart okay. because the, the, a lie cannot be... Can can't be perpetrated. That's right. You know, can't build a relationship on that. No. Definitely not. So, uh, I'm not bitter about either one of those yes. uh, situations. It's life. Yes. And I needed to know more than I did yes. because I might not have done yes. what I did. Yes. But I'm not unhappy. I'm not unhappy. Mm -hmm. Well, audience, you heard it from her. She's not unhappy. And she's glowing. I keep telling her to look at the camera, but she has it so you can see her beautiful face mm -hmm. and her smile, her authentic smile. Mm -hmm. Do you want to show your, your crochet? Oh, I Do have. You want to just kind of hold it up, let everyone see it? I've been asked to make a hat. There's a new style of a ruffled hat. Yeah, around the edges. Yes. That's lovely. And, um, I was asked if I could do it, and I said, well, let me try. Yes. You know, yes, very beautiful. Thank you. And 
Uh, I just want to tell you what she's doing. She's an artist. She makes many different uh, art, artistic. Tell yes. us what you do. I um, this is a, this when I was nine years old. No, I was eleven years old. My mom asked my brother, my sister, and I what we wanted to be, and I said I wanted to be an artist. Because I would draw, and on any piece of paper I could find, I would draw. Yes. And she openly said, oh no, you'll never be an artist. I won't allow that. Mm. She should never have said that. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's now an artist. Yes. Where can they reach you if they needed to buy some of your artwork? I am in the process of having a website created. Okay. And it is called Jelena Rose at... Uh, Oh, forgive me, but it is Jelena Rose, and you can find you'll find me on the internet, and um, you can also find me at Gmail, Jelena Rose at uh, Gmail dot com. At Gmail dot com. Yes. And sometimes she will have some of her pieces in the shop at Twenty uh, Fourth and Florin, Twenty Two Fifty One Florin Road. Yes. Florin Square, which is the the black haven of shops and uh, go to for whatever your needs are, be it uh, oils and clothing and and even to eat out and you know just different things. You know we're building our foundation and we need your support. Uh, the African uh, Museum is here. Sojourner Truth Museum is also in the house, and we're here in Sacramento, California. Yes. So, um, today, uh, this is the new year that I said, I'm going to do things a little differently, folks, you know, because it's a new year. New year means newness, rejuvenate. So, uh, with that, I recommended read. Mm. You know, we should all be reading. We should all be educated because knowledge is power. This is a book that is written by Chancellor Williams called The Destruction of Black Civilization. Great issues of race from 4500 BC before Christ to 2000 AD after the death of Christ. Mm -hmm. Well researched, well done. He's an ancestor now, but this is a recommended read. You know, it's not one that you rush through, but you digest it. And get to know more about the evolution of us and what has happened. So, um, again, I thank you all for tuning in. And I hope this was an opportunity to learn and uh, get to know um, that we live in a very diverse world. And so many of us have, you know, gone through something, but, you know, oftentimes you will not see it uh, outwardly unless, you know, it comes in so much ways that it just impacts you, which that too can happen. You know, when you think of, in my time, I've seen a lot of homeless, you know, and even I come from a family where mental illness was in my home. My mom had mental illness, but it didn't show up in that way. But mental illness has a way of changing and hiding shaping and metaphors. And yeah. yeah. Shaping and you in ways that you don't want to that be That you shaping. don't want to. And mm -hmm. what's interesting is someone that has mental illness could strategize in ways that you would think they're very clever. How can they do this and, you know, be crazy? But they're very clever to support that egg of brokenness. So, um, they know that they have an issue, but they don't want to bring it to the forefront because they feel confinement is coming as a result of the issue that they have. Mm. Confinement, like being taken to a mental institution. And, and, um, all of their personal liberties being taken from them and it's a big fear interesting that is interesting because 
I guess there's different degrees of mental illness. Yes. One's where you actually know that you are crazy, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know you you could play it off very well, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, I would say she had a lot of reasons to have had so much pain because of her beginning. Yes. So as my sister spoke about her her mother, you know, uh, you know, we know she loved her mother. You know, no one wants your mother to treat you that way, mm. you know, and when that happens, you know, you have to find out what happened so that you could be at peace with it. Are you at peace with it now? Oh, yeah. I have, I have no choice. Yes. You know, I can either allow it to degrade me and I end up in a mental institution or I can accept it as a reality of what happens in yes. life. Yes. You know? yes. And I would prefer... Uh, I, she was an example of the path I'm not going to follow. Exactly. And we're going to leave it there. At Let's Talk and Grow with Ms. Rashumba, mm -hmm. we know the path we won't follow, and we know the path that we should follow. Just have the courage to do it. Okay? Because it will feel good and feel right. So, sister, thank you so much. Thank you. And audience, tune in to the next episode of Let's Talk and Grow with Ms. Rashumba. Ashe or Ashe. So now you know it's time to grow at Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. Let the healing begin.